Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For this video, we're going to talk about SAP payment advice. We're going to try to understand its purpose, high-level process flow, functionalities, as well as some transaction codes that will help you. For this video, I will be using my blog post as the main teaching aid for this tutorial. I will leave the link down in the description box below so you can always refer to that for guidance. Also, if you hear any rain or some background noises, I apologize. It has been raining non-stop and I just wanted to record this video as soon as possible. Just so we're organized with the content of this video, or at least the flow of this video, I will share with you an overview as to what to expect. So first off, we're going to talk about what a payment advice is. Then we're going to move on to what a payment advice contains. After which, we will focus on the high-level process flow, its functionalities, and the transaction codes. Towards the end, I will be providing a summary, so we do a quick run-through of what we discussed overall. First off is what is a payment advice, and for me, you can simply think of a payment advice as a letter that you provide to a business. So this letter is not going to be full of thank yous or apologies or anything of that sort. That specific letter will tell the business that a payment has been made to an outstanding invoice. Now at this point, it sounds pretty straightforward. Allow me to share more information on that one. So I will introduce some situations relating to payment advice that can be a bit tricky to manage. Ideally, a business can have multiple customers and vendors involved. And when we say customers, that would correspond to sales and incoming payments. Of course, we're expecting some incoming payments to the business. On the other hand, when we say vendors, that would correspond to outgoing payments. So my example here is that a company needs to pay a vendor or supplier for the office printing supplies or if they purchased computer desks for the office then they need to pay off the vendor or the supplier so in a nutshell when you say customers we're talking about incoming payments vendors we're talking about outgoing payments now i want you to understand that there are several invoices involved for these transactions so if we're talking about the transactions between the customers, the vendors, and the business, we're talking about a lot of invoices, especially if it's a big company. Back to the definition of payment advice, which we talked about earlier, we said that a payment advice is a letter that is given to a business, letting them know that a payment has been made to an invoice. So it's saying, hey, company ABC, I am letting you know that I have paid this invoice. Now this letter makes it easier to keep track of the payments among multiple payment transactions involved in a business. So you might be wondering, how exactly does this letter make it easier? We'll get to that in a bit. Remember that the letter contains information. It's not a thank you, apologies, it's not a personal letter. I'm saying here that it is through the information contained in the letter where you can link or make associations with the payments and the invoice that is being paid. So what is the key takeaway? A payment advice helps match payments to an invoice. What happens when we match payments to an invoice? Well, this type of matching will help us clear the open items in SAP. So anything outstanding, if we're talking about outstanding payments of the customers, outstanding payments to vendors, then we will clear that out as it comes along. I will share some scenarios to help you further visualize. So for example, customers and multiple invoices. Let us consider the scenario where there are three customers, customer A, B, C, and these customers may have more than one invoice linked to them. So in the image below, you'll see that there are 12 invoices in total with three customers. So it can be invoice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
is linked to customer A, invoice 6 and 7 is linked to customer B, and invoices 8 to 12 will be linked to customer C. This time we're going to add on to the scenario and say that the customers decide to pay all of the invoices today except for one. Let's say that invoice 12 will not be paid, the rest will be paid. This type of scenario will bring you to the question, how exactly do we know which invoice has been paid and which hasn't been paid? So how do we know that the payment is for all 11 invoices except for invoice 12? This is where the convenience of the payment advice information comes in. The same goes for vendors and multiple invoices. So here is a simpler example. There are three vendors, a, vendor A, B, and C, and there are four invoices in total. So let's say that invoice one is linked to vendor A, vendor B has invoice two and three, and vendor C has invoice four. The same question would apply. How do we know which invoice has been paid and which hasn't been paid? And again, we will refer to the payment advice information. Okay, so we talked about the convenience of the payment advice information. At this point, you might be wondering, what exactly does the payment advice contain? This brings us to the next topic. We said that we are trying to match payments to an invoice using the information in a payment advice. What type of information can we find? Well, these are just some. So we have the payment date, payment amount, reference to an invoice or document number, as well as the method of payment. These sort of information will definitely help you link to a certain invoice in our SAP system. And this is like creating some sort of puzzle or playing a game where you match certain images to each other. We're done with what is a payment advice and what does it contain. We're now going to move on to the high level process flow. The process flow ideally follows the same concept where a payment advice is sent after or alongside the invoice payment. So in the image below, you'll see that we have customer, vendor, the SAP system, some arrows, and the payment advice or payment information. You'll notice that when we're talking about the payment advice or the letter containing the payment information, it is included in the transaction where there is an incoming payment. So this area over here. We're talking about the customer transaction going to SAP. And the opposite is, of course, an outgoing payment that is being recorded in SAP that focuses on the vendor payment. So the company will be paying the vendor. So it's an outgoing payment from SAP to the vendor. Between these transactions or on top of these transactions, whichever you prefer to visualize it, the payment advice or the payment information will be contained there. So if you're looking for more context clues or keywords for this, when we talk about the customer, meaning incoming payment to SAP, that would be the accounts receivable process. And when we're talking about the outgoing payment, meaning the company will pay, there will be an outgoing payment to the vendor that will be an accounts payable process. One thing to take note of is that there are certain functionalities or aspects that can be included when it comes to the payment advice functionality. So you can send the payment advice to emails. And if you're interested in that kind of functionality, you can refer to this post over here. I have it linked where I talk about utilizing BTEs or business transaction events as an example of enhancing the payment advice functionality in SAP and allowing it to send to emails. What are the other payment advice functionalities? So now that we know the process flow, we know what it is and what it contains, it's good to know the options we have for payment advice in SAP. So these are just some of the functionalities and I did link the SAP help document for further reference. 
So in summary, we'll just quickly go through this. You can enter payment advice manually. It is possible. It's also possible to link it to certain business processes like when they process bank statements, check deposit lists or lockbox data. You can link the payment advice note or the payment information there. It's also possible to manually process open items for incoming payments. When it comes to payment advice being imported to SAP, it's possible through EDI or as an XML file. And if you're looking towards doing a integration, meaning with SAP NetWeaver, then you can refer to this SAP note over here. So some of the functionalities above can help automate the clearing of open items in consideration to the information found in the payment advice. So let's say if you process a bank statement and there is a payment information contained there, as long as it finds that reference key that links to a certain invoice or some document in SAP, then SAP can auto clear those items for you. We're done with the functionalities. This time we're gonna move on to the SAP payment advice transaction codes. For the accounts payable process configuration, you can refer to this post. This is a good example for you to refer to. It's called the SAP DME no to pay functionality. And I included the transaction codes involved in the configuration as well as some testing tips. For the accounts receivable process, meaning this is an incoming payment and other needs, you can refer to this linked post called Intercompany Data Exchange SAP Payment Advice. Or you can tinker around with SPRO on incoming payments and payment advice notes. So this is a screenshot below. A while ago, I said that it is possible to manually enter a payment advice in SAP. You can do so through transaction code FBE1. So this is an example where you fill in the company code, the account type. So if it's a vendor, then you indicate K. If it's a customer, you indicate D. And lastly, if it's a GL account, then you indicate S. Once you indicate the account type, just enter the account number and the payment advice number. So in some systems, you can leave this blank and it will auto generate the number for you. If you want to view the automatically created payment advice documents, you can refer to FBE3 or simply go to the report below, which is this S underscore ALR report. When I say automatically created, so there are configurations that are involved with the accounts payable process. So if you're familiar with FBZP, there is an entry there for payment advice. So when you do your transaction in F110 or the automatic payment program, it will auto generate the payment advice for you. So this is basically it for our payment advice discussion. We're going to summarize everything that we just discussed. So first off, what is a payment advice? A payment advice helps match payments to an invoice and this type of matching will help clear the open items in SAP. What does the payment advice contain? It contains payment date, payment amount, reference to invoice or document number and method of payment, so on and so forth. For the SAP payment advice high-level process flow, definitely we're talking about the payment advice being sent after or alongside the invoice payment for accounts receivable, meaning incoming payment, and accounts payable, meaning outgoing payment processes. For SAP payment advice functionalities, I added keywords over here, so it is possible to do a manual input. You can link it to processing of bank statements. It is also possible to input payment advice through EDI or XML. And it is possible to integrate it with SAP and NetWeaver. So you can refer to the SAP note mentioned above. 
for the SAP Payment Advice Transaction Codes, we did talk about ESPRO FBE1 and this standard S underscore ALR report to view the payment advice in SAP. These other transaction codes are involved with the accounts payable process. That's it for this video. I hope you guys learn from this and I do hope it helps. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.